Hi, and welcome to our summary video on the Prime Center's policy brief entitled The Pandemic Digital Divide in Missouri, Rural Students Most Likely to Lack Full Access to Technology. My name is Ashley Donaldson Burley, and I'm a doctoral candidate in the Higher Education Administration Program at St. Louis University. I'm Aaron Park, I'm a third year doctoral student in the Education Policy and Equity Program at St. Louis University. My name is Amy Shelton, I'm also a third year student in education policy and equity. Ashley and Aaron and I worked on this project together looking at Missouri students and their access to technology during the pandemic. I wanted to share some of our key findings with you today. Ashley will start us off and provide the outline and an overview of the study and then Aaron will follow that with some of our key findings. All right, so the brief outline of what we'll be going through today. Um, we'll be looking at our study and diving a little bit deeper into how we analyze these district reopening plans, provide a brief summary about why tech access is important, our key findings, the need for tech access in rural communities and districts, how we can look to meet these needs, and provide some conclusions from our results. So our study looked at a sample of 191 traditional and charter districts. And specifically, we looked at the largest district per county in Missouri with an oversampling of districts in the largest counties. This included 586,000 students, which is approximately two thirds of Missouri's public school population. We analyzed district reopening plans that were publicly available through district websites or social media platforms. And we gathered various information on precautions, methods of instruction, and academic and health related supports. Then linked these publicly um, available information with data from DESE, including demographic and finance data, and information from the 2018 American Community Survey, which provides information on community internet access. School building closures in spring of 2020 highlighted existing digital inequities across the country and in Missouri. The digital divide, a gap between the those with and without sufficient access to technology, can perpetuate and worsen the educational inequities. So, in our policy brief, we define full access as having access to full de both devices and internet. Districts that already had one-to-one -one technology were well positioned to make the switch to distance learning during the pandemic. Of the 50 million K-12 public school students learning remotely during the pandemic, nearly 16 million were living in households without internet connection or device adequate for distance learning. Lack of access during the pandemic could really disrupt distance learning students' education by limiting their ability to fully participate in remote instruction or keep up with coursework at the same rates as their technolo technologically advantaged peers. Missouri DC survey indicated that 23% of Missouri students lack sufficient internet access for distance learning, leading to a research question, which Missouri districts met technology access needs and how? Our key findings indicate that 41% of districts plan to provide both devices and internet access. Two thirds of districts that started fully distanced plan to provide full access, and one third of districts that offer both in person and distance instruction plan to provide full access. In rural districts, smallest districts, lowest spending, and districts with highest proportion of white students were the least likely to provide devices and or internet access. Full results of our study are in our policy brief on the Prime Center website, but we wanted to highlight today some of the findings related to rural districts and students in particular. So if you look at the graph on the right, just to briefly orient you, the dark blue indicates the percent of districts within each urbanicity category that started fully in person with all students attending in school. The light blue uh, was the most common form of instructional mode. And this was districts that offered both distance and in-person instruction. So perhaps half of students were attending in-person and half were attending distance, or it may have been a much smaller uh, proportion chose one of those modes, but both were being offered simultaneously. Then we had districts that started fully in-person for all students, that's indicated in brown. And then finally, um, hybrid districts that offered a variety of different modes, but one of the forms would be the same students attending some days in person and some days remotely. Um, we've circled in red the 62% of rural districts that offered both in-person and distance instruction. 
in these districts, we found that one out of four households lacked access to the internet. And yet only one third of these districts offered internet access to families. And so though families were given a choice between in-person and distance instruction, 25% of families may not have been able to choose distance instruction because of a lack of internet at home. And then when we look at the districts that started fully in person, we found that three out of four of these rural districts had a contingency plan in place if there was a rise of COVID cases. So they may have moved all of their students to distance instruction temporarily. And so these were also students who may have in the future needed access to technology, even though they started fully in person. In addition, most districts, not just rural districts, but most districts had something in their plan stating that if a student was exposed to COVID, they would quarantine at home and learn remotely for a temporary time period. And so those students would have also needed access to technology at home. So then when we looked at what did uh, rural districts and all districts do to meet these needs, these internet access needs and uh, technology needs, we found that our suburban and urban districts were the most likely to offer full access to technology defined as offering both a device and internet access. Whereas our rural districts were the least likely to offer um, either of these. So they were the most likely to offer neither devices or internet access. And then when we looked at districts that did plan to offer internet access, rural districts were the least likely to offer home-based internet compared to 79% of suburban districts and 75% of urban districts. Most rural districts that offered internet access offered community-based internet access, which may have required families to drive to the school building to um, access Wi-Fi in the parking lot, for example. Then when we looked at the data um, from other angles, we saw a similar story. So districts that started fully in person, which were most likely to be rural districts, were also the least likely to provide devices and our internet access. And districts that started fully distance were the most likely to provide devices and internet access. And so again, um, this is in some ways to be expected in that students who started fully in person would not have needed access to the internet at home on day one, and yet may have needed it in the future in the case of a rise of COVID cases or a need for quarantining. Then when we looked at um, demographics of students within these districts, we find that districts with the highest proportion of white students, again, often rural districts, were the least likely to provide devices or internet access. And the lowest spending districts were also the least likely to provide devices and or internet access. Our higher spending districts in the state are um, often districts that are serving higher socioeconomic status or higher income students. And also some districts that are serving our lowest income students also sometimes spend more per student because of the higher need of their students. Um, and so our, our rural districts, while there was a great need for technology access, and these were some of our lower spending districts and perhaps were not able or chose not to use funds on technology access. And so this highlights uh, perhaps a greater need for bridging that gap for our rural districts. So in conclusion, uh, the pandemic exposed weak technological infrastructure and reinforced digital inequities in Missouri. Specifically, rural students in Missouri, we find, are the most technologically disadvantaged. However, districts are not solely responsible for closing the digital divide. It's going to take partnerships between communities and providers in order to close this divide. Uh, there was a broadband access bill that failed to pass during the 2021 legislative session, um, and we know that access to technology will continue to be essential in our schools and in our districts. So we're hopeful that um, broadband access will be prioritized um, and be able to reach some of these disadvantaged communities and populations. For our administrators, teachers, students, parents, and anyone really connected to a district, we've provided some discussion and reflection questions here um, to um, reflect on your experiences, um, if whether devices and internet were available, challenges faced, what was learned about how to best support students, and what would be recommended for future directions for practice and policy. And we'd love for you to check out uh, our full policy brief on our website, sluprime.org. We also have the full data set from the content analysis available on our website as well, in addition to other Prime COVID-19 products. So we hope to see you on our website soon, and thanks for watching this summary video.